Hi everyone, welcome to Designing APIs for Evolving Products. My name is Brenda Jin, I'm a staff engineer on the developer platform at Slack, and I'm really excited to be here talking to you all today. So why, um, why did I want to talk about this? Most API design resources give you recommendations and suggestions for greenfield opportunities. So a lot of the literature we have is about designing APIs for the very first time, when you get to make all of the decisions and mistakes you want to make. But there's not a lot of times in a product's life cycle, cycle where this is actually applicable. How many of you have had careers where you designed APIs for greenfield opportunities exclusively. Oh, I got one hand. <laughs> I didn't see any other hands though. Um, most of the time, we are actually balancing, ch making changes while balancing the decisions we've made in the past with where we wanna go in the future. And this is really where a lot of the API design challenges come up. It's reconciling the decisions we made a long time ago for a different context and a different problem, and making sure that they still work with all the new problems we're encountering and all the new things we want our users to be able to do. So we've actually learned a lot about evolving APIs for a growing product, and uh, Sarv Sani, uh, one of my coworkers who's with me, he'll answer, uh, help answer a Q&A at the end, um, and Amir Shavat, and I've actually written a book about this. So, Check it out if you want to read more. It's coming out in September. So what's on the agenda today? I'm gonna talk about who's on the developer platform team at Slack and how that's structured so you have a little bit of context about who makes what kinds of decisions and who's designing APIs at Slack. And then I'm going to give you four tips for designing APIs for growing and evolving products. All right, where does platform fit in? Whoops, this is supposed to be a tree. <laughs> so we're loosely, well we're organized by product development groups at Slack, so developer platform is one of the product groups, but there's also other product development groups like core product, which works on files and messaging, enterprise, working on the enterprise grid product, and a couple other groups which aren't featured here. And who's on one of these product development teams? It's actually a lot of people, and specifically a lot of people for the developer platform team. We've got web engineers, mobile engineers, product managers, design, it's very cross-functional. We've got QA, customer experience, developer relations, marketing, business development, and probably more functions that I couldn't fit on this slide. And who all is involved in API design? Everyone except for marketing. So we're constantly getting feedback from our developers from so many different sources. We get people writing, into, writing in um, for support and we get that feedback. Uh, we get feedback from engineers across the organization and it's just coming in from all over the place, which is so awesome on a cross-functional team because we can, get, we can get feedback from all different places and that feedback informs our design decisions. So let's talk about four tips for designing APIs for growing and evolving products. Tip number one, never assume what developers are doing. Now you might think this is a really basic tip, but I want to tell you a little bit of a story about how we made an assumption that we didn't even realize was an assumption until something went wrong. So in 2015, we decided we're gonna make our payloads really consistent. We had this one field, the bot ID field, and sometimes it was present and sometimes it wasn't, and we decided, hey, this field, it should always be present. When we have a falsy value, we're gonna set it to null. No more of this sometimes there, sometimes not there. What we didn't realize is that there was implicit logic when the field was unset, and developers had taken advantage of the fact that sometimes this field was unset to build applications. So when we made this change and we said this field is always gonna be set, we actually broke those applications. So when we're sending JSON, we have no idea which fields are actively being used by developers. And because our product is different from our developer's product, our code base is different from other developers' code bases. 
So what seems like a totally innocuous change because falsy is falsy in our code base could be devastating in another code base and that change can actually break apps. So the second tip is lean into consistency. I talked in the beginning about balancing the past with, with where you wanna go in the future. So you might have made design decisions in the past that you regret. Does anyone, anyone here ever made one of those decisions, a design decision that they later regretted? Okay, I see, I see some nods for those people who don't wanna raise their hands. Um, you might be super tempted to fix these mistakes in later, uh, in later releases of your APIs and later changes, but the result is that now you've got two names for a field, not one. You've got two paradigms, not one. That's a lot of overhead for developers to manage. So say you have 2,000 apps in your ecosystem and each one of those apps has to fork their code for both the old name of a parameter and the new name. That's now 2,000 more forks and you know who pays price for that? It's actually the developers. And so it's actually better to be consistent for cosmetic or superficial changes even if the old ways of doing things are eyesores because it's really hard for new developers to come into a system where there's different names for what they think of as the same thing. Tip number three, an API is more than its endpoints. Earlier this year, we released a new rate limiting system. We decided to roll out a simpler, more understandable system for developers. So while a majority of the apps were actually gonna hit fewer rate limits, there were some apps that were going to be rate limited more. Although this isn't considered a change to the inputs, outputs, or effects of an API call, we really had to think about the backwards compatibility implications of making these changes to access. Because from a developer perspective, if I'm continuing the same behavior that has always worked, it shouldn't ever break. Right? Like it would be a really bad experience all of a sudden to get rate limited for the same amount of traffic. So an API is more than its endpoints. From docs and authentication to SDKs, there's so much that goes into making, exchanging and sending and receiving data on the internet. Stability doesn't just come from the ins and outs of an API. It comes from everything around that API that supports developers. And consistency and stability should be a part of all public facing aspects of an API, including the access patterns that developers are already using. So my final tip, tip number four, is to expect change. In 2017, we launched the enterprise product and teams started migrating. To launch the enterprise product, we had to fundamentally change the architecture and infrastructure of Slack's web application. Now, this is a really scary thing to do sometimes, and you have to make really tough decisions about how you're gonna make sure your product scales. In that process, we decided to change the way that users ID, user IDs worked inside of Slack. And this was a change we had to make in order to support the type of product that we wanted to have and um, the type of experience that we wanted our customers to have. Now, if we had just let this change go through the API, there would definitely have been applications that got confused about why one user that they'd stored state with all of a sudden had a different ID or appeared to be a new user. So when things do happen and products do change, it's really important to put the developer experience first. And when possible, and it's not always possible, but when it is, it's worthwhile to mitigate these breaking changes. So what we did at Slack was we actually built an entirely new piece of infrastructure that would translate these IDs back and forth so that app developers could continue to receive a consistent ID for the users that they were interacting with. So in sum, these were the four tips. Never assume what developers were doing. Lean into consistency. An API is more than its endpoints. And expect change. 
Uh, if you have any questions, you can follow me, uh, follow me on Twitter, Cybernetic Love, or you can. I'd actually like to invite Saurabh Sani, one of the co-authors of the book and fellow developer, uh, uh, fellow engineer on the developer platform, up to the stage and open it up to you for some questions from the audience. How do you balance bringing things to market quickly and taking um, consistency into account uh, between APIs? So the question is, how do you balance getting things to market quickly and uh, balancing the consistency? Yeah, consistency over time and consistency with the new product. Right. So I, I think that's a question we ask ourselves every day <laughs> on the developer platform team. And it's really, um, it can depend on how your code base is structured, how your organization is structured, but we're always wanting to make sure that we have the right velocity of change with the quality that our developers come to expect. And that ratio or that negotiation might actually change over time. So in the beginning, if you've got a lot of developers who are really flexible, maybe it's okay to, to just create all the features that they want really quickly and if they're willing to work with you, that's fine, but at a certain point, uh, there's a lot of developers relying on you now to do business, and, you, and I think the balance shifts a little bit, so you have to be way more careful about um, stability than maybe you did before. I think one of the things I would like to add is, um, uh, one of the things we try to do as we launch new features is have some beta partners, and as you see today is like when we launched a new feature, we already have a few apps who tried those features and actually built on top of it. And uh, through that process, we get a lot of feedback, uh, which we used back in updating our product and making sure things are consistent. So we essentially follow a very iterative cycle of development, which helps us keep our speed up at the same time, um, as much as possible, keep things consistent. Yeah, and we've actually evolved our design processes over time because that feedback is so important. We also now have, and, and we didn't necessarily have this before, and we're still working on the best way to do this, but we're adding feedback earlier and earlier into the design cycle. So more and more it's a standard for us to get internal feedback before we make uh, big API changes and actually get it in front of more people um, before the whole product is developed. So it does an inevitable need of like introducing breaking changes to the API. What is the approach you guys are doing at Slack? Is it like versioning and formatting? Um, so your question is, what are we doing to handle breaking changes to the API? Um, for, for instance, versioning. Um, so I don't know if you went around the roadmap booth and one of the items we have is around versioning and that is one of the uh, items which we are exploring right now. Uh, it's something which is in our long-term roadmap and we are exploring. Uh, so that is definitely uh, one of the areas which we are looking into. Yeah, in the past we've done things like um, trying to namespace new suites of APIs, um, trying to fix things going forwards. And I think we really need to, to think about how that's gonna work best for our developers, especially for new developers. I think for existing developers um, who already have apps that maybe they're not changing them that much, um, it's okay if the API just doesn't change as long as everything's working. But for new developers coming in to see a lot of inconsistency, especially if something has more than two different names and it's more than two fields that have different names, it's, it's, uh, it's not, it's not easy for them to jump right in and, and start. Oh, what's the name of the book we're writing? The, the early name is? Designing Web APIs. Let me go back. <laughs> All the way. <laughs> Oops. 
uh, designing web APIs, building APIs that developers love. And it's, um, if you're interested, it's available for pre-order on um, O'Reilly as well as Amazon. So um, what's your view on uh, versions of the API, like you know, V1, V2, V3, uh, versus you know, keeping, being able to you know, include in adding changes without you know, doing a backward compatibility? Um, do you, you know, that might help open the door? Yeah, one of the things that we're thinking hard about as we, as we consider versioning is how to give developers a better experience while not being disruptive to our own workflow and to developers. So making sure that if we do versions, developers can do that in a way that works for them and as seamlessly as possible. So that, that's one of the things that we are exploring right now. Yeah, we are exploring different ways how we can do versioning at this point. Um, there are a lot of different uh, ways people have done it before and we are trying to figure out what would work best for the Slack API. Um, if you folks have feedback, please do share with us and we would love to learn more what has worked well for you in terms of versioning uh, previously. I think we have time for two more questions. Sorry, and I have one more specific about Slack. Um, I think something that happens Slack is like you guys have the web API, um, then you have like the events, and then you have like the slash commands, and then the interactive buttons, and then if you look at all those payloads, you know, uh, they're not consistency, but so how do you, you know, I think that's the other problem, like how do you manage consistency at that level when you have so many different products and can imagine different teams and different schemas and, but you know, for us, you know, for the developer, it would love it, they all kind of like. Yeah, combined. and that's definitely one of our challenges, which is why I recommend consistency over correctness. Like even if you think that payload before was like, oh, I don't, I don't think I like the name. I think we've learned kind of the hard way that it's it's really challenging for developers. Like one off these decisions seem like a good idea, but then two years go by and you're looking at a lot of different types of payloads and names for things and, and it is really hard for developers. Um, and, and that consistency is, is one of the motivations for why we're, we're exploring versioning to see if we can, we can give developers a better experience as far as, as consistency. So just to add specifically in the outgoing payloads, we have these inconsistencies where something is JSON, something is uh, application form encoded, and that is definitely one of the things that we want to fix, and versioning could be a way how we may end up fixing it, or there are definitely other ways how we could address some of that. Um, but eventually, like the feedback we have heard is like people want everywhere full JSON, and that's what we want to send in all outgoing payloads eventually and have you an option to get it as full JSON. Um, at the same time, we want to make sure that we don't break any apps. So uh, we need to balance these two things together. Last one. Cool, well. All right. Come find us after if you have any um, any other questions. And we're so excited that you were able to join us today. Thank you. Thank you.